Good morning, folks. It's Diamond with the Oppenheimer Ranch Project Magnetic Reversal News and Shinrin Yoku, bringing you a Grand Solar Minimum update Tuesday, August 8th. Around 1 p.m. Mountain Time 2022, we have some geomagnetic instability due to a coronal hole facing, well, just past facing Earth, and it was expected, but the big story, shake, shiver, and shovel. Farmer's Almanac predicts, well, a cold winter. Keep calm. It's boom time. Chili style. Back for 2022 and 2023 is out, saying we should prepare to bundle up this winter. Almanac says this winter was expected to start earlier than last year's, and December could be stormy and cold nationwide. Maine-based publication predicts January will be particularly chilly here in the Northeast. We're saying that this winter is going to be shake, shiver, and shovel, so there'll be a little bit of everything. Overall, I think the winter is going to be probably average amount of snowfall. I think it's going to be cold, particularly the months of January and early February. Sounds like a song, shake, shiver, and shovel. Uh, the good news, though, Almanac also predicting late February will bring milder temps that should be more bearable. And we'll see if they hold up to their prediction. And the forecast goes for Texas as well. Bitterly cold air predicted for another chilly Texas winter. Could be some frozen pipes in your future. While Texans continue to endure record-setting summer temps, those anxious for a new season might be wondering what to expect as winter rapidly approaches. And the Farmer's Almanac has released the winter forecast that we just showed you, and Texas is in for some bitter cold. Now, parts of Minnesota have been parched, but recently received more than four inches of rain. Obviously, some flash flooding and issues there, but a good respite. Uh, for the drought up in the upper Midwest there. Now, here's the corn condition for the U.S. Not looking good in Colorado. Blue and red here are excellent to good, and you can see that the majority of corn in Colorado, 80% or more, is fair, poor, or very poor. Uh, another state struggling is Texas, obviously, 30% fair, 32% poor, 18% very poor for about 80% fair or worse, and almost no corn is excellent, just 1%. So the corn is looking a little below average uh, this year, and we did just get our first sweet corn in from Colorado, and it is delicious. Now, the tropical season has been a dud. For months, almost no activity in the Atlantic, and we do have now some potential for, here's tropical disturbance one, 20% chance of cyclone formation in 48 hours, 30% through five days, so that's it. And, all is quiet on the tropical front. Heat and possible flooding threats continue. Dangerous heat will impact portions of the Northeast. There is an excessive heat warning for the Philadelphia area out to South Jersey there. So heads up, it's going to be 98 or better. And that could be, well, that's... That's hot. Heavy rain and flash flooding will continue to threaten the southwest. Portions of California and into the Great Basin. Those areas in green where flood watches are up here in the Four Corners region. So heads up. You could have rapid two-inch per hour dumps in some of those desert areas, which cause, well, instant flash flooding. We also have fl flood warnings up in Kentucky as well. So the eastern U.S. is not out of the flooding woods. Now let's take a look at the precipitation possibility here. And you can see that there, uh, well, it's looking like a quite a wet system, even South Ca uh, Southern California here picking up some moisture. The dry lake area, Lake Powell, Lake Mead, is going to be picking up some heavy monsoonal rain here, three to four inches predicted over the next uh, two weeks, which is good news. Bad news is that uh, Kentucky and Southern Appalachia looking saturated here. Uh, sh some areas showing 12 to 14 inches of rain through the end of August. So that is just going to be quite moist there in the southeast. Magnitude 4.4 earthquake shakes up Colville and the Smith Valley. Take a look at that. Boom. Just south of Carson City and Truckee. Did you feel it? Well, we do have another rumbler out there. There it is. Saying 4.5 here in Walker, California. All is quiet. Uh, on the seismic front across the U.S. and the world in general. That's good news. Now, here's some interesting science. A balloon fleet sensed a 7.3 magnitude earthquake from the stratosphere. Now, this isn't a predictive tool. This is just being able to detect the earthquake floating well above a planet. And this is going to be used to detect earthquakes in Venus. And it's good news that this balloon and this system, we were able to sense an earthquake from the stratosphere. 
All of the articles we talk about will be linked below, so please check our sources. Now let's go over to some volcanic updates and the Reykjanes Peninsula, which has been in the dark for 48 hours. There has been no video footage, no one has been able to see the eruption, and the eruption site has been closed. A decision was made about 48 hours ago to keep the area closed for tourists until further notice due to ongoing bad weather conditions. Civil defense and other emergency units in Iceland will make another appointment uh, tomorrow morning to reassess the situation. So that's what's going on in Iceland. Uh, the seismicity has decreased precipitously, but is still clustered around the eruption site and the visibility is only from a distance now uh, up the cameras on the eruption are still blocked so that is the state of the iceland eruption as worldwide there is really no other volcanic activity to report now the mainstream is reporting on the solar wind stream that unexpectedly hit earth at 327 miles a second the problem is that it was well expected and we knew the coronal hole was coming. We just didn't know it was going to be, have this much effect. Clearly, the effect of our waning magnetosphere and the fact that the solar wind here was pushed up above 650 kilometers per second. And that is quite significant from just a coronal hole. And that's just a pl normal plasma stream coming out of the sun here in number 10. And that's what caused the perturbation. And as you can see, we popped up into geomagnetic storm uh, about 24 hours, 36 hours ago, 48 hours ago now. Stayed up there for about uh, 12 hours. And we've been in geomagnetic instability for days. Here are the other K indices. Uh, the college station showing a geomagnetic storm for the last three days. So that's quite significant. And the current K measurement right now coming from college station has us in geomagnetic storm. And therefore, the aurora will be lighting up there. So... That's space weather. Now let's talk about some surface weather. Tiny African kingdom goes skiing amid rare snowfall. While millions of across Europe sweat through the summer of record-breaking heat, they're skiing in Africa. <laughs> and not only that, it's freezing in New Zealand uh, with snow down low and uh, record cold coming in today and tomorrow. Bitter low temperatures are being forecast over the next few days in New Zealand. So bundle up as Greenland is now gaining ice during the melt season. There is mass gain of ice in Greenland during the peak of the melt season. I repeat, the exact opposite of what they've been fear-mongering about for about 10 years is occurring now. There is mass gain in ice in Greenland during the melt season. So that will not be on mainstream uh, media. The drought in Europe is on mainstream media because it fits the climate narrative and crops are failing, but not all industries are failing. The unwitting, unwitting winners of France's drought are the salt farmers. And because of prolonged sun and evaporation, guess what? You get record salt production. So good news for salt farmers, bad news for food farmers. Extinct pathogens ushered the fall of ancient civilizations. I think I've done several podcasts on this topic. When the sun goes dim and we descend into solar quiet periods, well, pathogens destroy societies. Just take the Black Death, for example. So if you're interested in this topic, uh, there will be a link below to the paper. Now, the paper says that thousands of years ago across the Eastern Mediterranean, multiple Bronze Age civilizations took a distinct turn for the worse around the same time. And, well, we are at one of those flexure points currently on Earth, the end of the empire. Now, more science here. In fact, coming from Universe Today, will Europa finally answer the question, are we alone? They're talking about future... Uh, pro projects to go out here to this ice-covered moon to discover life in oceans beneath the surface. But my question is, what about uh, the nine or 12 alien craft Bob Lazar saw decades ago in the Nevada desert? What about those? They've all but proven to be a true story. And space entrepreneur Robert Bigelow, 
raised eyebrows back in November of 2017 saying that, well, aliens are right under people's noses. So check out the interview if that interests you. And we're going to be doing a podcast on magnetic reversal news on the topic. Now, unexpected geologic activity on the dwarf planet Ceres shocks scientists. It's not supposed to do that. And in the paper that just came out, modeling reveals how dwarf planet Ceres powers unexpected geologic activity. They're saying here in the paper that radioactive decay is um, responsible for the geologic activity. So there's that. Couldn't it all be, well, I'll get to that later. NASA caught a sun-diving comet crashing into our star yesterday. The dirty snowball. That's, why are they still using that? We've landed on comets. There's no snow there. They certainly are dirty, but there's no ice. So let me just get that out of my system. Here's the picture of the sun-diving comet yesterday. And you can see directly on the other side of the sun, opposite of the path of the sun-diving comet, look, a large coronal mass ejection. There's no connection there, according to mainstream science, though. What say you? <laughs> I say they're clueless, and that the electric nature of this sun-diving comet caused the sun to react. Well, anyway. Did you hear about the billion-barrel oil reserve we just discovered and confirmed in central Wyoming, it could literally make us energy independent forever from the entire world, fix our gas prices and all of our worries. Do you think anything will come of it? Probably not. Now, what will come of something is the 33rd annual Crestone Energy Fair, and it's coming up my birthday week in August 28th. 29th, I think those are the dates. Check out CrestoneEnergyFair.org for more. And that is a giant Western puffball. It's about as big as they get. And if all goes well with my oral surgery, I will be doing a talk, Food Security Solutions. So join us for that. And that's a boom to knowledge. Proper prior planning prevents piss poor performance in a dystopian world where... No one even knows what a puffball is and how delicious they are. You tune in to the Oppenheimer Ranch Project for the news you need to know and the know you need to use it. Be safe. We love you.